Hello, and welcome to Window Read. Today, we delve into poetry and baseball. Before we get into the story for today, we have an announcement. Window Read has joined Jukebox Media LLC. Jukebox Media LLC, the solution for writers and readers. If you are a writer who has a book to self-publish and you have no idea how to go about it, Jukebox Media. LLC can help. Whether it's editing, formatting, cover design, cover production, or self-publishing your book on Amazon, Jukebox Media LLC can help. The cost to you is determined by what help you need and only the help you need. Your total cost will be far less than mainstream publishers charge. Check out the website at jukeboxmedia.biz. You can get an idea of the cost for service you desire at the website, or use the email address to get a quote on your specific project. Also, the Jukebox Media LLC website has a bookstore, a blog, and access to the window read videos. That's jukeboxmedia.biz. Check it out. Now, on to today's story. Back in the late 1800s, baseball was just coming into its own as a national pastime. It was played in small parks in small towns and large all around the country. Some of the players even took on the role as a bit of a hero among some of the fans. In 1888, Ernest Lawrence Thayer wrote a poem about one such local hero. It was titled, Casey at the Bat. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to two with but one inning left to play. And then, when Coney died at first and Barrows did the same, a sickly silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go in deep despair, the rest clung to that hope which springs eternal in the human breast. They thought, if only Casey could get a whack at that, we'd put up even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, as did also Jimmy Blake, and the former was a Lulu, and the latter was a cake. So upon that stricken multitude grim melancholy sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey's getting to the bat. But Flynn let drive a single to the wonderment of all, and Blake, the much despised, tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted, and men saw what had occurred, there was Jimmy safe at second, and Flynn a huggin' third. Then, from five thousand throats, and more, 
there rose a lusty yell. It rumbled through the valley. It rattled in the dell. It knocked upon the mountain and recoiled upon the flat. For Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into the plate. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. And when responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his hat. No stranger in the crowd could doubt, t'was Casey at the bat. Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. Five thousand tongues applauded when he wiped it on his shirt. Then, while the withering pitcher ground the ball into his hip, defiance gleamed in Casey's eye, sneer curled Casey's lip. And then the leather-covered spear came hurling through the air, and Casey stood a-watching it in haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the benches black with people, there went up a muffled roar, <sighs> like the beating of the storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill him! Kill, Kill the umpire! shouted someone in the stand. And it's likely they'd have killed him had not Casey raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage shone. He stilled the rising tumult and bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the spheroid flew. But Casey still ignored it, and the umpire said, Strike, Strike two. two! Fraud! cried the maddened thousands, and the echo answered, Fraud! But one scornful look from Casey, and the audience was awed. They saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain, and they knew that Casey wouldn't let that ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. <laughs> Somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out.